Something, somewhere, somewhen, must have happened differently. Petunia Evans married Michael Varis, a professor of biochemistry at Oxford. Harry James Potter Evans Varis grew up in a house filled to the brim with books. He once bit a math teacher who didn't know what a logarithm was. He's read Gödel, Escher, Bach, and Judgment Under Uncertainty, Heuristics and Biases, and Volume 1 of the Feynman Lectures on Physics. And despite what everyone who's met him seems to fear, he doesn't want to become the next Dark Lord. He was raised better than that. He wants to discover the laws of magic and become a god. Hermione Granger is doing better than him in every class, except broomstick riding. Draco Malfoy is exactly what you would expect an 11-year-old boy to be like if Darth Vader were his doting father. Professor Quirrell is living his lifelong dream of teaching defense against the dark arts, or as he prefers to call his class, battle magic. His students are all wondering what's going to go wrong with the defense professor this time. Dumbledore is either insane or playing some vastly deeper game which involves setting fire to a chicken. Deputy Headmistress Minerva McGonagall needs to go off somewhere private and scream for a while. Presenting Harry Potter and the Methods of Rationality. You ain't guessing where this one's going. But Headmaster, leaving all of my assets in one undiversified vault full of gold coins, it's crazy, Headmaster. It's like, I don't know, doing transfiguration experiments without consulting a recognized authority. You just don't do that with money. I'm sorry, Harry, and I do apologize, but allowing you control over your own finances would give you far too much independence of action. I will permit you to withdraw five galleons for Christmas presents, which is more than any boy your age should spend, but poses no threat, I think. I can't believe you just said that! You admit to being that manipulative? Manipulative? No. Manipulative would be if I did not admit it, or if I had some deeper motive behind the obvious. This is quite straightforward, Harry. You're not yet ready to play the game, and it would be foolish to allow you thousands of galleons with which to upset the game board. No. Oh, come on! You must have some ideas. Mr. Potter, I agreed to act as your adult guardian on this expedition. I did not agree to advise you on your choice of presents. I don't do Christmas, Mr. Potter. How about Newton, miss? Isaac Newton actually was born on December 25th, unlike some other historical figures I could name. This failed to impress Professor Quirrell. Look! I'm sorry, but I've got to do something special for Fred and George, and I've got no idea of my options. Hmm. You could ask which family members they most dislike, and then hire an assassin. I know someone from a certain government in exile who is quite competent, and he would give you a discount on multiple Weasleys. This Christmas, give your friends the gift of death. That made Professor Quirrell smile. It went all the way to his eyes. Well, at least you didn't suggest getting them a pet rat. Harry's mouth snapped shut, and he was regretting the words almost as soon as they were out of his mouth. Pardon me? Nothing. Long, dumb story. And telling it seemed wrong somehow. Maybe because Harry was afraid Professor Kroll would have laughed even if Bill Weasley hadn't been cured and everything put back to right. And where had Professor Quirrell been that he'd never heard the story? Harry had gotten the impression that everyone in Magical Britain knew. Look. I'm trying to solidify their loyalty to me, you know? Make the Weasley twins my minions? Like the old saying goes, a friend isn't someone you use once and then throw away. A friend is someone you use over and over again. Fred and George are two of the most useful friends I have in Hogwarts, Professor Quirrell, and I plan to use them over and over again. So if you'd help me be Slytherin here and suggest something they might be very grateful for... Harry's voice trailed off invitingly. You just had to pitch these things the right way. The Weasley twins are using second-hand wands, Mr. Potter. They would be reminded of your generosity with every charm they cast. Harry clapped his hands together in involuntary excitement. 
Just put the money on account at Ollivander's and tell Mr. Ollivander to never refund it. No, better yet, to send it to Lucius Malfoy if the Weasley twins didn't show up before the start of their next school year. That's brilliant, Professor! I suppose I can tolerate Christmas in that spirit, Mr. Potter, though only barely. Of course, that will cost you 14 galleons, and you only have five. Five galleons! Just who does the Headmaster think he's dealing with anyway? I think that it simply did not occur to him to fear the consequences if you turned your ingenuity to the task of obtaining funds, though you were wise to lose rather than making it an explicit threat. Out of curiosity, Mr. Potter, what would you have done if I hadn't turned away in boredom while you, in a fit of childish pique, counted out five galleons worth of knuts? Well, the easiest way would have been to borrow money from Draco Malfoy. Seriously, Mr. Potter. Probably, I'd have done a few celebrity appearances. I wouldn't resort to anything economically disruptive just for spending money. Harry had checked, and he would be allowed to keep the time-turner while he went home for the holidays, so that his sleep schedule didn't start to rotate. But then, it was also possible that someone kept an eye out for magical day traders. The gold and silver trick would have taken work on the muggle end, and seed funding, and the goblins might have gotten suspicious after the first cycle. And starting a real bank would be a lot of work. Harry hadn't quite worked out any money-making methods that were fast, and certain, and safe, so he'd been very glad when Professor Quirrell had turned out to be so easily fooled. I do hope those five galleons will be enough to last, since you counted them so carefully. I doubt the Headmaster shall be so eager to entrust me with your vault key a second time, once he discovers I've been tricked. I'm sure you did your best. Do you need any assistance finding a safe place to store all those knuts, Mr. Potter? Well, sort of. Do you know of any good investment opportunities, Professor Quirrell? And the two of them walked on in their tiny sphere of silence and isolation through the brilliant and bustling crowds. And if you looked carefully, you would see that where they went, leafy bows faded, and flowers withered, and children's toys that played cheerful bells changed to lower and more ominous notes. Harry did notice, but he didn't say anything, just smiled a little to himself. Everyone had their own way of celebrating the holidays, and the Grinch was just as much a part of Christmas as Santa.